this lecture addresses something that is a a problem for a lot of people, most people in fact. That is the idea of communication apprehension. Most people approach classes like public speaking with a certain degree of anxiety. So I spent a long time, many years, uh, studying some of the ins and outs of communication apprehension. Where it comes from and how we can work with it. So that's what today's lecture covers. Communication apprehension is defined as an individual's level of fear or anxiety associated with either real or anticipated communication with another person or persons. This definition comes to us from Dr. James McCroskey. And there's a few key words to highlight here. Of course, fear or anxiety. But real or anticipated communication. Real communication is happening in the here and now. Whereas anticipated communication is not even happening yet and we're still nervous about it. That's what it means here. So it's just thinking about delivering a speech or just thinking about going in for a job interview. Uh, these are all things that uh, do spark some anxiety with different people. Another part to look at is person or persons. We may be nervous talking one-on-one -on -one and fine talking to a crowd, or just the opposite. Or we may be nervous talking to individuals and crowds. So it just depends on, the, on us as individuals. Dr. James McCroskey is known as the father of communication apprehension research. He created what's called the PRCA-24. That would be the personal report of communication apprehension. It's a 24 item or question survey. And this survey measures levels of communication apprehension in four different areas. That of group discussion, meetings, interpersonal communication, and public speaking. So the question now becomes why why do we encounter such anxiety whenever we think about either public speaking or interpersonal communication or interviews. Well, that why could be answered by uh, any one of the following that we're going to discuss or a combination of several of them. Some of the factors, uh, we have two here. First one is degrees of evaluation. And you'll see degrees of several times. Degrees of means to what extent. So in this case, to what extent am I being evaluated? There are many situations where we feel like uh, what we say will be judged. You see some examples there. Employment interviews, first dates, or meeting the parents of that significant other. Or even delivering a speech in a class where you know there's a grade. Those are all situations where degrees of evaluation may bring about some anxiety. Then we have what's called subordinate status. Subordinate status means that you are talking to someone who is your superior. Now they may be superior in that uh, they have a deeper subject knowledge than you do. They're the expert in the field. And you may have some fear of asking the wrong question or looking foolish. Or they may be superior to you in the form of status uh, in the workplace or in school or something like that. So they have power over you because of their position or title. Next we have degrees of conspicuousness. This is a situation where you are conspicuous or you are standing out. All eyes are on you. This may be when you're the one holding the floor in the conversation, doing all the talking. It may be when you're up in front of a crowd giving a speech or directing a training session in the workplace. But whatever the situation, you know that everybody is looking at you and listening to you. And that may bring about some anxiety. Next, we have degrees of unpredictability. Life is unpredictable. You never know what you're going to encounter. 
you may be very nervous in a speaking situation because you've never been there before. You've never met the people that you're talking to. Uh, something else that might make you nervous, maybe this is your first presentation with a PowerPoint or a visual aid of some kind, and you don't know if it's going to behave correctly. So there's all sorts of things that play into unpredictability. But mostly it comes from being in a new situation. Degrees of dissimilarity uh, comes from whenever you're talking to an audience who has very little interest in what you're talking about. At least you think they have very little interest in what you're discussing. Whether or not it's true is secondary. But because you feel like they're not interested or they disagree with you, uh, you may experience some anxiety on that front. Another contributing factor is prior experience. If you've had really good luck at interviews in the past, you've interviewed very well, or you've given speeches in the past and they've gone very well, or you're a great conversationalist, whatever the case, success is going to encourage you and downplay some of your anxieties. However, the, all, the opposite is also true. Failure, uh, prior failures can cause anxiety in the here and now. So if the last time you gave an interview, you felt like you just didn't do well, or the last time you gave a speech, uh, that can cause some anxiety because of prior bad experiences. And in some cases, we just lack communication skills. We've never done it before. If you've never given a speech, I would anticipate, and you should too, that, that you're going to be nervous. It's a skill that's been untested so far. And so every time we learn a new skill, whether it's communication related or not, every time we learn a new skill, we're going to be nervous the first time that we employ it. We're going to be afraid that we're going to mess it up do something incorrectly. This is just part of the process of learning. So now comes the question, how do we get past it? Well, my best advice for you today is to get used to it. Even those of us who have been speaking for years, uh, we, still, we still experience anxiety and where you want to get is to a point where the anxiety is no longer debilitating. It's not going to cause you problems. Be able to work with it. So the best place for you to start right now is make sure that you are prepared and that you practice your speeches. If, you, if you're preparing for an interview, prep the interview and then practice the interview if you can uh, with a, a roommate or a family member or something like that. Practice is going to get you a long way toward getting used to what you have to say. You want to also want to focus on success and think positively. And that sounds kind of strange. But when we focus on success and think positively, we're going to feel better about the communication situation, about the speech, about the interview, about the conversation we're going to have. The opposite is also true. If you focus on negative things, if you tell yourself repeatedly that you're going to mess things up, you're likely to do things to sabotage yourself. So do the other. Think positively. Also do what you can to familiarize yourself with the situation. This is a concept called systematic desensitization. Systematic desensitization is where we get our bodies used to being in a situation. So the first time you give a speech, you don't even know what that's going to feel like until you do it. And so your body may give you a shot of adrenaline. Your heart rate increases. Uh, you want to hold your breath instead of breathing normally. Those are all very common experiences with your first speech. When you know to expect those kinds of things... You can be mentally prepared and you can think your way past it. To slow your breathing down, to, to take even breaths, uh, to know what to do with that extra shot of energy you're going to get when that adrenaline kicks in. Those are all things that come with time. So my best advice 
on this front is to volunteer to get up in front of people as often as you can. This is going to be uh, the number one thing in you figuring out how to manage the physiological side of things. And lastly, here on this slide, relax. When you're in a classroom, no one wants you to fail. No one's out to get you. Your classmates want you to do well. Your professors want you to do well. And so mentally, this is not a tough situation to be in. Relax, because we all want you to do well. This is a very positive environment. And when it comes to physical side of things, there are different techniques that we can employ to help ourselves relax physically, uh, whether it's walking around the building or up and down the hallways prior to your class beginning, or uh, sometimes we can grip the sides of our chair or something along those lines to help lead off some nervous energy. And those are just two uh, very simple techniques, and there are others out there. But relax. No one wants you to fail. We all want you to do well. 